Hello and welcome to the NBA Outlet presented by OTGBasketball.com. I'm your host, Nick Faye. With me as always, Corey Waldron and special guest, Zach Noble of the Four Seasons Podcast. What's up, guys? What's happening? We got a big time guy on the pod. I'm excited to have you on, Zach. Appreciate it, Corey. Good to hear from you guys. We are going to talk Timberwolves today. Before we get started, just a quick reminder, you can check us out on iTunes, Bog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, Dash Radio, and YouTube. But before we look forward to next season, we're going to look back at last year. Timberwolves were 47-35, and 35, first round exit in five games by the Rockets. Obviously, Jimmy Butler only played 59 games. What were your thoughts on last year, Zach? Yeah, so for me, it's hard to not think about last year and think about like the average fan or Minnesota fan's perspective of last year. For me, I mean, as a lifelong Timberwolves fan, I mean, as long as I can remember four or five years old, uh, KG era, even further back, Sam Mitchell, you name it. But uh, I, it was one of the best years of my life. I mean, I enjoyed every moment of it. My expectations were just to make the playoffs, really. Uh, and that they did. I mean, I would have loved um, for Wiggins and Towns to improve and everybody to gel and be very happily ever after. But <laughs> that definitely wasn't the, it wasn't the case. I mean, people are nitpicking this team way too much. Uh, my thoughts on it, uh, they, Minnesota fans are just very ungrateful, which is really shocking to me. They shouldn't be. I mean, we should just be realistic, you know. And that was not making the playoffs for 14 years straight. So the fact that we made the playoffs um, and were even competitive for a couple of games was uh, m- meeting expectations in my thoughts. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say we overachieved because playoffs were the expectation. Um, but we definitely met them, to say the least. Yeah, I think anytime you miss the playoffs for, you know, a decade or more, and then you make the playoffs, that's a win. Uh, that's a successful yeah. season. As you mentioned, I mean, things obviously could have gotten – could have been better. We could have seen a jump from Wiggins, from Towns. Uh, this team could have gelled probably a little bit better. Maybe use more bench players, too. I don't know. <laughs> um, no way, no. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I mean, this is, this is definitely a step in the right direction. Obviously, you have two young guys that you're building around. Um, a, a good core and, you know, and talent-wise. Uh, and like you said, they gave Houston some trouble in a couple of those games. Just Houston was obviously, as we know, just on another level last season, especially offensively. But I, I thought Tim Rose was good all in all. It's just, um, you know, where can they go from here? Right. The biggest thing for me I mean, that I'm a little worried about is the fit with Butler and Wiggins. I mean, and the fact that Thibs were hired him as we thought he's going to be this defensive guru that he's always been, not being able to adapt to the modern NBA. Um, but honestly, as long as he wins and these guys start to improve somehow and he plays the right guys, um, and that's that's going to be a big question mark this year. There, I think the Timberwolves, I don't know, you might say this just because they're my team, but um, I would like to hear your guys' opinion, but I think the Timberwolves have more question marks or just as many question marks this year as anybody out there. What do you I mean, think? I think I think there's more question marks on this team this year than last year. I mean, the oh, yeah. uh, them just signing Luel Dang is questionable. Like, I, I just don't understand the mindset, you know, of getting back these guys who obviously haven't been um, all stars in years. Like, Derek Rose is probably going to play a big part. Luel Dang. Hopefully, Joe Kim Noah doesn't end up somehow in Minnesota. I just don't understand what Thibs is looking for for the role players on this team. Um, obviously, Jamal Crawford, he left in the offseason. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think – and Bella's – Belisa, right? Uh, yep, yeah, Bella Lisa. Another guy who was solid, probably didn't play enough last year. Uh, for me, it's just I, – I don't know. I, I don't know what this team looks like aside from the starters and – if he's going to play these starters, you know, 36 plus minutes, I think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, no, I agree with you guys. I think obviously there's a lot of question marks. And the problem is two of the biggest question marks are two of the most important players on the team. I mean, most important people, you know, you Tibbs is on the hot seat. You could argue, you know, with the defense, like Zach mentioned, has been a problem in Minnesota. He's not probably getting the best of some of the players. And then the whole thing with Jimmy Butler, you know, Butler's complained about Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. As well, there's been all these rumors that he wants to leave in the offseason. He, he wants to go to the Lakers. So I think that's concerning. And, you know, obviously the other players on the team, and that's not even to touch on some of the smaller things. So 
plenty of question marks to go across the board. So, uh, yeah, just with all these Jimmy rumors, I mean, it, it's tough. But my, my thoughts are I'm not too worried about it yet. Because I truly believe Jimmy's one of those guys, too, who sets all the bullshit aside of winning self you know? We start yeah. winning, and, I mean, the expectation definitely goes up in Minnesota. I think Tibbs deserves, I mean, second round or bust. I think he's gone if we don't make a second round this year. Um, that's that's my expectations. I mean, he doesn't need to even win a game, but he's got to make it there. Uh, but we need to see improvement. We need to play these guys more, and, uh, it, it's interesting. I, I kind of like the fact that um, Butler is a, attacking these guys a little bit because they need to get better. There's no excuses. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. So the worst it can do is hopefully motivate these guys because if they stay the way they are, they're not. I mean, they're going to lose Butler anyways, with or without him. That's very true. And I mean, there's plenty of improvement for both guys, especially on the defensive end. What would you say was the highlight of last season for the Timberwolves? Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty simple for me. I mean, first getting Bowler, I mean, two of them. So getting Bowler and then on top of that, uh, making the playoffs. Um, it was just 14 years old and that, you can't get any better than that, right? Yeah, no, it, it really can't. I, I think the playoffs definitely are the biggest highlight, but I say like a side highlight would be Carl Anthony Towns being, um, making it to the All-Star game. Yep. Um, just showing him grow the tent. I think the – I believe it was his family. They watched it, like, in, like, a hotel room and they, when they found out. Um, they, like, all were celebrating and whatnot. So that was always cool to see. For me, it's got to be that. The fact that he has shown that he is getting better, at least on the offensive side. Defensively, he, he's got a long way to go. But yeah, that was um, he's definitely one of the t- top five offensive centers in the league right now. Uh, agreed. Absolutely. And I, I personally think – his one-on-one, uh, his on-ball defense improved a little bit. I mean, people trash him so much. and But a big part of that, I mean, is more so his pick-and-roll numbers, pick-and-roll defense numbers, um, and his off-ball numbers. I mean, that's where it gets ugly. Um, but I think he also gets blamed for the fact that he gives up on a lot of plays in pick-and-roll defense and doesn't necessarily give him the support he needs on his man when pick and roll defense is important. Um, Towns gets all the blame in that matter. Yeah, no, it's true. And it's not like Teague's an elite defender. So I think maybe the overall team defense could help Towns out a little bit more. And he just needs to take a step as well. But like you guys said, making the playoffs, Cat in the all-star game. And also I think Tyus Jones had a nice little jump as well, kind of made himself more valuable as a player. But on the negative side, biggest disappointment of last season. Yeah, biggest disappointment was the no defensive improvement. I mean, like the li- the little defensive improvement because I like I I truly believe they improved a tad bit, but it was so minimal. I mean, with these guys, I mean, we have the talent to be a top ten defense, a top fifteen defense, and if they can do that, um, in order to make the second round or get to the Western Conference Finals conversation. They need to be able to play top 15 defense at a minimum. I mean, especially with the West coming up this year, it's going to be tougher than ever. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's just a major disappointment. Wiggins is basically a zero, a negative on defense. (laughs) It's disgusting. Yeah, I think the biggest disappointment for me is probably – it was was Wiggins. uh, Getting the max extension and just not seeing that much – jump in his game um, the jump shot is still really questionable at times I mean just consistency um, and he's been that way since college you know even his time in Kansas there'd be games where he would drop 25 plus and then drop like eight points in the next game it just seems that consistency is a big issue from him obviously he's not that good of a defender um, he's also not happy necessarily with his role he thinks he should be more of a vocal point in the offense which you know show it you know prove it and maybe you can be um, right. so for, for me, it's probably Wiggins, just the fact that, you know, coming off that huge deal, I didn't see him re- necessarily take that huge deal type of money jump in his game. No, but tell me this. I mean, I personally, I don't believe in Wiggins anymore in Minnesota. Like, I don't really see him getting much better. I think he get a little better from last year because he drastically declined. I think that he can only get better from last year. He's absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, seriously, I mean, the, the chemistry can only build. I mean, yeah. you, you would think if the more you play with somebody, the 
more comfortable you get with that person, you you would think. But I personally don't think him and Butler are a fit, and they ever will be a fit that's going to um, reach their both of them each other's maximum potential. I mean, Wiggins was pretty good without Butler. I really, I believe Wiggins still can reach his max potential if he leaves Minnesota soon enough and gets to the right situation. Um, I'm just hoping it's not too late for him. What do you think Wiggins' max potential is if he were to go somewhere else? Yeah, so call me crazy. I think he still, if he leaves like um, probably in the next year, year and a half, I still think he can get become a top 15, top 20 player in this league. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on him? Are you are you completely over him? Have you given up on him completely? I personally, actually, funny enough, this was a topic I covered on the Brooklyn Buzz uh, the other day because there's been rumors about the Nets maybe having interest or just speculation from fans. I think uh, there's still plenty of potential. It's just if you trade for him, it's a super big risk because I think it's like 25 mil, 27 mil, and then 29 right. mil. So, like, if he doesn't do that, now your cap flexibility is completely, you know, taken from you. So I think the potential is still there. I'm not sure if he can get to that level. But, you know, the right coach, the right situation, it depends on his mindset, too. I think a little maturity. I think it's easy to forget. What is he, like 22, 23 years old? He's still very young. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so with that said, I think Brooklyn's one of those teams where if he was in Brooklyn, I mean, I love the coach. Uh, there's very few coaches, though, that could get his max potential. Don't get me wrong. But uh, you got to think about it. The year before, he averaged 24 points a game which is insane, and he shot 36 from three, 45 field goal percents. Those are pretty solid numbers overall. Uh, yes, the defensive liabilities there didn't really lead to a lot of wins, um, but he put up great numbers when Butler was out last year as well, and that he did uh, help lead to more wins last year. What are your thoughts on Wiggins, Corey? Um, I mean, I was really high on Wiggins coming out of college. Like, I, I kind of like bought into the stuff of him being the next LeBron James. Maybe not the same like level. Maple but I thought Jordan. Could, yeah. So, so I, I love the athletic ability, the bounce. You know, he was explosive. It was just, can he play some defense? Can he get a consistent jump shot? Um, the offense is, is still coming along. The defense is what worries me. I think he can still be a top twenty-five player in this league. A top, maybe even you know, a top fifteen if he. He keeps taking the jump, but I don't know. It I kind of feel the same in a sense where I don't know if that's Minnesota. You know, it might have to be a change of scenery where there's no one else uh, giving him any trouble being like the number one or number two option. Because on this team, you know, realistically, some nights he may be the number two, but he's going to be the number three most nights. Yeah. No. Do you think uh, if you were a GM on a team that's really kind of scrapped, where they're not going to get a lot of Big time free agents, do you, would you make that move? Because there's certain situations. I mean, I can definitely name a few that I would. I would still take that risk. Um, but I'm a I'm a Wiggins believer, and I don't think there's many of those out there. Um, I, I think, think the you... Wolves. Would... Go ahead. Sorry, my fault. No, no, no. Bring it. Um, I just think the Wolves would have to cut their losses, and I think they should um, get a player with much less potential. That's just a solid player already. I was just going to say, I think if the team's young enough and they have a good nucleus and they're looking for a wing guy who can score, then I say, like, why not take a shot with Wiggins? Like, that would just be my mentality of it. If you have a spot at the wing and, you know, you you think you can add a guy who's going to probably give you still 22 points per game, you know, why not? Especially because he it's not like he can't run up and down the floor. Wiggins is still a crazy athletic guy. Yeah, I think if you're in the early you know stages of a rebuild, why not do it? You know, worst case, it doesn't work out. His contract expires by the time you're done with your rebuild. I think the potential is still there, and like I mentioned, the age. But moving forward, you know, looking at this upcoming season, the OTG Power Rankings have the Timberwolves at number 14, ninth in the West. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Oh, uh, when I first looked at it at a glance, I was kind of okay with it. But then I did the math and turned out they were the number nine in the West, and I thought it was crap. <laughs> uh, because think about this. I mean, as long as they stay healthy and the team's intact the whole year, I mean, there's so many question marks. That's where it, I'm okay with it because I truly believe three through ten in the West, you can literally have every order, but there's only three teams guaranteed to make the playoffs in the West. In my thoughts, you can have any order. I'm not going to judge you. 
Um, but the Wolves have more question marks or just as many as anybody. So um, that's not that outlandish, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty fair for right now. Um, obviously, you know, it changes because now with LeBron and the Lakers, there's another team in the Western Conference playoff mix. Um, you know, I, I think in the West, is specifically, you know, between 6 and 10, I think there's going to be two teams that are going to be playoff teams not to make the playoffs this year. It's just going to be how it goes. It's going to be a roll of the dice to see who gets in. Um, but I think 14 is fair. I mean, if there were – if there were less chemistry issues that I knew of, I might even put this team a little bit higher. But because I know that Jimmy Butler isn't happy necessarily, neither is Wiggins, um, I, I think 14 is good. I think talent-wise, they probably are higher. But like Corey mentioned, given chemistry and coaching issues, I think that's probably why they're a little bit lower. But I could still see an argument for them to boost up at least one or two spots going into the season. I know that's why I had them low personally. Like I know when we when we did the rankings, I, I put them right around this range because I was – you know, the locker room and even Tiz being on the hot seat, in my opinion, I think that's going to add to it. But tell, tell me this. Uh, power rankings are normally right now current, correct? Or Correct. Well, cur- right- yeah, but cur- the current state of the locker room is, to my knowledge, you know, still an issue. Uh, th- see, how, how I would look at it, and, and, that, and that's fine. How I would look at that is last year, based off where the teams finished last year, and then – you got to add, obviously, put things into context of where what players were added um, and what players were subtracted. But um, yeah, you don't you don't really know the state of the locker room until they get out there and play together. I guess. Yeah, but, no, it's definitely fair. I think, like you guys mentioned, any the teams in the West, especially other than like the top three or top four, it could go any which way. Probably more so. Big based off of injuries or who's banged up and has a rough season and whatnot. But moving on to this year's additions, we'll start with the draft picks. Josh Akogi in 20th overall, you know, defensive versatility, some good hustle, some good basketball IQ, obviously needs improved offensive skills. What were your thoughts on this pick? Yeah, no, I was completely fine with both of these. It was interesting because I was a lot of people were looking at KBD, Kata Bates' job at 20, <laughs> and we got yeah. him at 48 as well. So uh, they didn't – Neither of them really stood out immensely at summer league, but they look solid. I mean, they both, I mean, seem like they they can be capable defenders and add to the defensive potential of the Timberwolves, and that's what I'm most excited about, honestly. Um, but also, I mean, you got length and shot blocking. So, Kata Bates, I mean, he literally blocked six-plus shots at the rim in summer, summer league. Uh, it was pretty special watching him do that. I mean, because the Timberwolves don't have anybody to do that right now. Um, so take any defensive sightings we can get. Um, the, the range isn't necessarily the fit because what the Timberwolves need is three-point shooting and defense more than anything. Uh, and hopefully this adds defense because it's not really adding three-point shooting. Uh, but I, I definitely like the upside of both of these guys a lot. I was really into Keanu Bates' Diop uh, before the draft. He was one of the few guys who caught my eye. I was kind of hoping the Pacers were going to get him. Um, I mean, I, I love I love the fact that he's six seven. I like that he's a young player. I'm hope hopefully he gets playing time over Luol Deng. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Um, but uh, I, I like both these picks are solid. I think it doesn't hurt them. They're both defensive minded. I think these are the right kind of guys to bring in. Zach, uh, which player do you think is going to see more playing time this season? So, yeah, like Corey said, I, I just – it's all about these are the guys we need to play. Like, this is – that's the big question. I, Tibbs has never been a guy to play rookies either. That's been an issue. So, um, I hope – I'm hoping big time because this is part of the potential we can unlock. And I think these guys do have potential. Like, um, geez, I just – I really hope these guys – can play 10 to 10 to 15 minutes at least at least I mean maybe five five is what I'm thinking because I mean there's just Bibbs is getting his guys it's scary it's scary <laughs> I, I'm praying for 15 out of both these guys I don't know what do you guys think I think like you said it kind of all depends on Tibbs I mean I could see a scenario where they don't get much playing time and maybe he sees you know he finally sees what's going on and he plays the young guys but I mean, Luell Dang will definitely kind of probably hurt them minutes-wise because that's one of his guys. He knows what they're going to do. But maybe later in the season, you know, as they progress and kind of prove some things to him, they'll, they'll see more minutes. Are you guys yeah, not, high on these players? 
I thought uh, getting Bates D up, you know, in the second round at that point, I know a lot of people, he kind of lost some of the hype going to draft night, but I think anytime you get a player like that, it was projected to be a first round pick for months, you know, no, <laughs> nothing bad about that. And Okogi, I think is a solid pick too. I think defensive versatility definitely is going to add to the team. I think like you mentioned though, I'd be a little concerned, maybe spacing wise, maybe adding that three point shooter would have helped, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, yeah I'm right there with you. I think they both can eventually shoot it. I just don't think they're going to come light up the three-pointer right away. I mean, Akogi th- shot 38% from three his sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, so that's – I mean, that's all. It's just – yeah, it's a little shorter than the NBA range, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And if they can develop that, it's going to be two solid picks. But talking free agent additions, Anthony Tolliver, one year, 5.7 mil, obviously a great locker room guy, gives you some spacing. And then Luel Dang recently signed, which around the veteran minimum – and we really don't know what to expect from Luel Deng because I think he played 13 minutes last season. Yeah, unlike you guys, I, I'm okay with the Luel Deng saying, but it all depends. I, it, as of right now, I'm okay with it. But like we've been saying all along, it all depends on how Nibs disperses these minutes. I mean, that's the biggest question mark for the Timberwolves and their success. Um, getting the lineups down, finding who's going to work together. And he wasn't able to do it literally the last two years. I mean. Tyus Jones fit better with some lineups than um, Jeff Teague and wasn't able to put them together. Uh, I really like Anthony Tolliver. I do. I mean, he's definitely become a pretty solid 3 and D guy. Uh, he brings a lot of three-point shooting. He's a bomber. I don't know if you guys paid much attention, but the dude literally shot three to five feet behind the three-point line uh, multiple times last year. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and he was great for – I mean, I know the people in Detroit are really, like, upset that he's gone too. Yeah, no, that that's definitely a case because they, they're a team that needs three-point shooting as well. Um, I don't know if James Nunnally – do you guys know anything about him? I'm pretty excited about him. Uh, he was with Fenerbahce uh, overseas, and I think he's a better defender than stats may show, but that dude – can stroke the three, and that's the only reason why we brought him in. Uh, but he won't see. I heard him. a little bit about him, not too much, but yeah, that dude literally shot like fifty-five percent from three last year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's impressive. Yeah, I think it was some absurd number like that. Uh, but uh, it, he won't touch the floor, and that was even a thing for him overseas, having um, a tough time keeping up with guys in his league there. So. Uh, if he can't, if he can't even hang with his defender, uh, he's not going to see a minute. What are your thoughts yeah, on the free agent, Corey? I think Anthony Tolliver was a really good signing. I was just seeing how you know players and fans in Detroit reacted to him leaving. Yeah, you know, it speaks volumes about him. Another older guy, though. You know, he's thirty three, but it's a good vet to have. Um, as you mentioned, he can hit the, the long ball, which is what this Timberwolves team really needed with three point shooting. Um, I'll take your word on. Uh, James Nunnally or Noonley. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I didn't get to watch him play overseas, so I'm going to take your word on it. Well, well, dang, I mean, who knows? Maybe him not playing all of last season was a good thing. I know he hey. had back surgery a couple of years ago, and it didn't really go necessarily the way it was supposed to go, <laughs> I believe. Um, so, you know, maybe then a year off was able to help him get his body right, so maybe he can actually, you know, play some serious minutes this year. Yeah, I can't say he's not well rested. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. He's got fresh legs. Four, the freshest four, legs of any 33 year old. 44 minutes a game? What do you think? Yeah, and I think Tibbs would try it. No, <laughs> yeah, I think he might ball, be taking a big spot by year's end, huh? <laughs> what do you really expect, though, from Dang? Like, do you think he'll see minutes this year? Do you think he'll get back to like a playable NBA level, or is he going to be a guy that just sits at the end of the bench? You know, I mean, he's a guy where he's young enough and. He deserves one last opportunity. I've always thought this, so why not Why not with the Timberwolves? Why not with a coach who gave him his best years of his life? Um, I mean, if he's not good, we, we have him on a small contract. We don't play him or cut him. It's not that big of a deal. We have <clears throat> the right depth, and we have players um, to play over him. So I don't know. See what he can bring. I mean, he was a very good defender at his peak. Um, but, and like I said, the Timberwolves need any sort of defense they can gather. <laughs> <laughs> Old, young, child, grandparent, <laughs> you name it, blue all dang. 
Hey, I agree. I mean, we don't really know what to expect, and maybe he can get back to producing some type of level on the court. At worst, maybe it's some defensive versatility. I mean, he wasn't a terrible shooter his career, so it, there's some potential in there. Corey, any thoughts on Dang and what he'll bring this year? I mean, I I just got to see how he can play. I mean, I think definitely he can play some minutes. You know, I wouldn't be – like, I think Luol Dang, even last year, probably could have played 15 to 20 minutes and been, a, you know, somewhat of a useful NBA player. Uh, you know, on a team like this that's fighting for a playoff spot, you know, I, I wouldn't want him playing more than 25 minutes. I I just got to see how he looks. I mean, he might be really slow now. I just I, – I just don't know how his body is held up, especially not playing for a year. I just don't know. He shot thirty eight percent the year before last, so that's not that's not a great sign. But you know, I I, I, don't know. I need to see it like preseason. Just give me a few reps of him on the floor so I can get some kind of um, idea of how fast he looks. If he's really it's slow, been, then no way. It's been it's been so long, and you got to think too with our three additions, Tolliver, Dang, and Nunnally, They all contribute to spacing, and that's one thing that Timberwolves desperately needs. So. Um, whether that spacing is good or bad, I mean, I'm excited for Tolliver, I'll tell you that. I mean, and there's definitely there's definitely upside with those other two. There is. I mean, you sign Dang for that low of a contract, it's, there's upside. Yeah, for sure. Looking at some of the departures, you know, Aaron Brooks, Jamal Crawford, uh, Nemanja Bialica, Cole Aldridge, Marcus George Hunt, Amaya Jefferson. Any of these guys you wish they kept? Are they going to lose anything not re-signing them? Yeah, by elites, I was almost more uh, angry about than signing, than bringing in Tolliver for him. I mean, it, it's basically a wash because uh, I don't think Tom really liked uh, by elites that much because he was showing plenty of potential, just didn't play him. Uh, but he, he got burned quite a bit. Um, wasn't bringing much to the table outside of three point sh- shooting. And that dude was making shots, though. I mean, that he was one of the best contested three-point shooters, uh, especially on our team, if not, I mean, the league. Uh, Bialica has a lot to bring to the table for the Kings if they play him. But that was the only disappointment in the losses I had, honestly. I, I don't think they really miss any of these guys. Um, I probably would miss Jamal Crawford slightly just because he's fun to watch. Um, but yeah. you know, even him at the later part of his career, he's just not as efficient. Uh, um, I, I don't necessarily think they miss any of these guys. Who's starting on opening night for the Timberwolves? Okay. Uh, this should be pretty easy, you, you think, unless it's uh, the Timberwolves. <laughs> full effect. Uh, but I don't, I don't see uh, Will Dang dropping 60 points in training camp and Given Thibs all the hope in the world, <laughs> so I'm just I'm sticking with the the same lineup as last year. You got Teague, Wiggins, Butler, uh, Taj Gibson, and Towns. Um, but the big question mark is which Wiggins shows up. Is this team gonna build off their chemistry from last year? I mean, is it? Are we gonna improve or are we just gonna try to improve individually? Um, I. Wiggins, I mean, you never know, like, because he doesn't put anything in the spotlight. So you don't know how hard this guy's working, but you would imagine, I mean, the kid's young. I mean, he's had a lot of hype growing up. I think he wants to be great. I, I feel like his work ethic goes unnoticed, but uh, we'll see. I mean, he definitely buffed up coming into last season. Uh, put on some weight, hit the weight room. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Butler's coming off a knee injury, though. That's kind of scary. Especially with all the minutes Tibbs had him play, not la- only last year, but his time in Chicago. Corey, what about you starting five opening night? It's got to be the same starting five, unless somehow Derek Rose and Luol Deng crack the starting lineup to line like <laughs> one in the small ball four. But I think it's got to be the same lineup as last year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. These jokes is unreal. <laughs> They, Any position battles going into the you know season? You know, not only in the starting lineup, but you know, rotation wise. I personally would like to see Tolliver uh, get more starting minutes. Um, I think him over Taj Gibson would be great just to explore um, a time or two and have Taj bring some more defense to the second unit. Uh, yeah, I, I one guy that we haven't talked about is Justin Patton, who basically 
looked pretty dang good in the G League last year when he played. A uh, big seven-footer out of Creighton, didn't play any time uh, for the Timberwolves last year. Um, if Tips plays him, I mean, I think there's more upside than people think. I mean, we drafted him at 16. That's pretty high. And people were really high on him out of the draft. I mean, the injury was a concern, and then you're getting banged up, and we know Tips doesn't play young guys. So he was a, you know, a guy to keep an eye on. Yeah, and he can shoot the three ball. Exactly what the Timberwolves need. Any position battles for you, Corey? Uh, definitely not. I don't, I don't think so. I think it's pretty much locked up with who they got. Um, I mean, I guess the only position battle would be like for the backup point guard between right. Derrick Rose and Tyus Jones. But I, I still think Tidge is leaning towards Derrick Rose simply because of their days together in Chicago. <laughs> um, and you, you kind of mentioned it, Zach. Are, what are your feelings on all of these jokes about this, you know, Kemba Bulls team or whatever the hell the – the jokes are like are you okay with it like are you worried that this is what this team is becoming like what are your thoughts on all of this yeah so i'll only be okay with it is if we can find a way to get joe kim noah nicola miritich <laughs> and bobby porters to round this team off then it'd be in full effect and bring it on because i think that would be a solid team <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be pretty awesome uh it, it gets exhausting honestly uh but with that said, I mean, we have Jimmy Butler. We He's the second best player in this franchise history. I'm, I will take all the jokes you can have. We're in the playoffs. I mean, until this team starts falling apart and going backwards, I'm going to enjoy the ride. I'm not going to get too worked up until Jimmy Butler's on the trade block, until things start falling apart. And I, I they managed last year, and I think this team can put egos aside I think they can have a lot of success, honestly, and um, I'm not writing them off after a year because you got to think, Tegan Butler was their first year with the team last year. Um, the Rose signing was I was completely fine with. It just depends on what his minutes turn out to be as well. Um, it, it's going to be, like I said, there's so many question marks, and the biggest one is just how many minutes each guy gets. But, Corey, I think you mentioned um, the backup point guard battle. That, that's super interesting because a lot of people think Tyus Jones was way more effective last year and than even Jeff Teague, uh, starting point guard. So, um, there, I mean, there might be a little battle there because Thibs promised uh, Tyus Jones more minutes. He promised him this offseason because Tyus Jones, there's rumors going on that uh, he wanted to demand a trade out of there. Interesting. I, I've heard that as well. I heard uh, Minnesota fans were saying they'd like to see Ty Jones with the starters a little bit more because he was had better numbers than Teague. Uh, in terms of breakout starter, though, who's going to break out in the starting lineup? Yeah, so you would hope and pray it's Wiggins, but that's not my pick. <laughs> uh, my, my pick is Carl Anthony Towns breaking out on the defensive end because that's all he needs. I mean, if he breaks out on the defensive end, uh, he will for sure become a top 10 player. And he has the potential I still believe to become a top five three player in this league um, but it will deplete pretty quickly if his defense doesn't pick up who you got Corey as a breakout starter I I, I almost don't want to bite put my foot in my mouth like I I want to I want to say Towns but like a part of me wants to really say Wiggins even though we kind of like what? were hard on him <laughs> earlier like, earlier in this podcast but I'm gonna say Carl Anthony Towns because I don't think he's happy with how that first round playoff went. Um, you know, he was really bad to start off that series. Uh, Capella and company really just kicked the living crap out of him. Um, and they abused him. So I think that's got to be some kind of motivation for him to work harder this offseason, which I'm hoping he did. And I'm just expecting him to be a more complete p player going into this season. So I'm saying, you know, you know, a, a two to three point jump in his game, a couple more rebounds. Um, yeah, I, I'm going across the towns. Yeah, same thing here for Carl Anthony Towns. Same reason as Zach, though. I think defensively he takes that jump and takes his game to another level. There's no really spot that he can't get to. So I think there's still plenty of potential for Towns. But one bench player to break out this season. Yeah, and that all depends on the minutes. So <laughs> um, honestly, the guy that I think, um, Ken and I think Tom is going to realize that he needs him more than anything is that spark plug and Josh Kogi. I, I really think. Um, he's going to be a guy that contributes to a playoff team. Um, he's kind of got the Marcus Smart mentality. I think he, my comparison is a mixture between Marcus Smart and Contavious Caldwell-Pope. Um, 
but there, I mean, shows bits and pieces of both of them, in my opinion. Um, but if he can be that spark plug off the bench and bring that energy that Marcus Smart brings, uh, that would get us, us pretty excited in Minnesota, that's for sure. Um, I, I think the easy answer is Tyus Jones. I think yep. that's like the – I mean, the guys, as you said, he was guaranteed more minutes by Tibbs. Um, he actually, you know, he looked a lot better than Jeff Teague, in my opinion. At least he played with more effort defensively. Oh, uh, the one year I got to watch Jeff Teague up. Right. Uh, the one time, the one year I got to watch Jeff Teague up close this year in Indiana, he just didn't play any defense. Like, it's just um, the lack of effort and it's just not a lot of lateral quickness there either. Um, so I think Tyus Jones, for me, has got to be the breakout bench player. But I'll say... You know, if Derrick Rose plays like he did in the playoffs last season, then he'll be a um, a rather effective offensive spark plug for the Timberwolves team off the bench if he can do what he did in the playoffs. There we go. Now tell me this, Corey. What did you think of Derrick Rose playing the two spot? I don't. I wasn't too sure on that. I, I don't really like it. <laughs> he played a lot of the two guard. Um, I mean, he just doesn't play, again, another guy who doesn't play defense and has to have the ball in his hand because he can't really shoot. So he's got to try and create for himself or do like a, a kick out. Uh, I mean, I don't like Derrick Rose in today's NBA. Like I just, even if he was a little bit better, I just, I still don't think I would like him. I, I don't know. I feel like he's just one of those guys because Tibbs has a history with him. He's going to get that, um, that kind of res- those respect minutes almost. Right. Which he probably shouldn't. He probably should only play 20 minutes a game. And just literally, you know, all right, we need some quick offense. Derek, go out there and just take over for, you know, eight minutes here or six minutes here and just see what you can do. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I'm going to go with the same guy, Tyus Jones, like you guys mentioned, for numerous reasons he should break out this season. But looking at the wins in the season prediction, what is best case scenario for the Timberwolves next year? Yeah, so best case scenario, um, I truly believe, I mean, it would take a dang miracle. I mean, Wiggins to efficiency to go back up. I mean, get even higher than it was uh, two years ago. Um, to show some signs of life on defense um, all around on the team. And Tibbs, I mean, f- figuring out the right lineups and also to go with that, I mean, playing the right people in the right amount of time. So I think the – Best case scenario, I mean, it's 53-54 wins. Um, that's obviously dreamland, uh, but that's not my pick for what they do, of course. Um, best case scenario, I think it's it's home court. That's it. This team just – I think it's – a lot of these teams in the West, like the playoff teams at least, their best case scenario is probably home court uh, for me personally. So I think best case scenario would be like a four seed. Uh, that's, you know, no locker room issues everybody's gelling because obviously when you're winning, everybody's happy. So they're winning. Uh, the defense takes a turn. It looks more like the Tom Thibodeau defense from the Chicago days. Uh, these bo- these role players in the dang Derek Rose, um, they're playing effective minutes, but not too many minutes. You're seeing guys like Tyus Jones being a valuable asset off the bench, probably as like a six man. Anthony Tolliver's playing those key minutes. Jimmy Butler is healthy. He is an all-star. Wiggins decides to play even just a normal amount of defense. And as we know, uh, (laughs) and as we know, talent just takes his game to another level. And this team, you know, just is a really tough team to beat. Yeah. Like you guys mentioned, 50. What would that equal? Oh, the, uh, the best case scenario would probably be, I'll say 52 wins. All right. That's close to me. I like it. Yeah, I'm pretty spot on with Zach here. I think 54 wins is best case scenario, a four or five seed. You know, the defense takes a major jump, and then Andrew Wiggins shows us that he might be able to live up to that contract. And like we mentioned, Cat jumps defensively. Butler stays for the team, no issues. The bench guys are all great. And maybe the rookies actually get some playing time. But on the negative side, worst case scenario. Yeah, so one more thing on the best case. I mean, you think about last year, if Butler was healthy just even like five more games, we would have been the 30 seed. Yeah, And we probably would have won a round. I mean, there's a good chance of it, definitely. Um, but that didn't happen. And that's – everybody was facing injuries last year. So, uh, 54 wins would definitely get the three seed, um, I think. So, worst case scenario, um, everything just goes to hell. Wiggins doesn't improve. The chemistry isn't there at all. Uh, Butler is – probably should be traded because he's probably going to leave if 
things aren't gelling and they're not producing wins, whether it's a month before All-Star break or defensive numbers are absolutely terrible. <laughs> God, I just hate talking about worst case scenario, guys. It's terrible. <laughs> um, nightmares. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna have nightmares of this. Absolutely. So that would equal about 37, 38 wins if all of that happened. I mean, hopefully we got a coherent player back for Butler at that case. Uh, I think we definitely could. I guarantee there's some playoff teams that we make and pushes willing to take a risk on that. So never know. Maybe they can get a player that gets them to that eight seed or seven seed, but um, that allows Wiggins and Towns to thrive. But I doubt it. So I'm going to say 37, 38 wins is the worst case. Uh, I think the worst case scenario would be, I'll say 42 wins. Love it. I'll say, I'll say it's them just being out of the playoffs. You know, they, some of the guys take a jump. They're just, basically, they're the same team from last year. Like somebody gets hurt, somebody misses some time, unfortunately. The bench still looks abysmal. Um, Thibs may not even make it through the year. They somehow stumble and they end up being like a 10 seed in the West, just miss out of the playoffs with the last, you know, three days left in the season. Well, uh, I that's my worst that, case. I can handle that. That gets me a little excited. <laughs> that means <laughs> you can handle that? I'd rather, I'd rather have no hope than lose in April and not make the uh, – maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> you gotta have something to look forward to. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, that's great. I um, mean, hey, if you think we're the same team as last year's worst case scenario, that team actually won. They figured out ways to win. So I'll take it. I'm thinking worst case scenario is 38 to 40 wins. You know, Jimmy Butler's move, chemistry is a problem. Wiggins doesn't look like he's gonna get much better, and Towns continues to struggle defensively, and then maybe Tim's is fired. But actual prediction for the season. Actual prediction, okay. So, because the West got a little tougher and there's so many question marks, my prediction, I mean, I've bounced around with this, honestly, all day and a lot of the rest of the summer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh So, with that, I'm going to say the Wolves are going to be the seventh seed. So, they're going to improve by a seed, but they're going to have the same win total as last year. And that's 47 and 35. Um, I, nailed, I nailed it last year. I was pretty happy about. But uh, this year, there's just so many question marks. So I went right in the middle of probably best case and worst case. So um, I was looking at Odd Shark today. I was looking at betting odds. I don't ever look at betting odds. It's just funny. But uh, the Timberwolves are at 45, according to the odds. Um, I was there, like you said, they had 47 wins last year. I, and actually, I think actual prediction, I'm also going to roll with 47 wins. Love it. I, I think that's – this is right around where they are. I actually think, though, 47 wins this year may be, you know, a six seed in the West. I'm just not sure what the, these teams are going to look like. I think the Pelicans may st- take a step back and the Blazers. Um, but I think 47 is my actual prediction. It's somewhere between the five and eight seed range. Corey, yeah. are those your two teams you're saying missing the playoffs? The – Blazers and the Pelicans. I, I think <laughs> I, I think the Blazers miss. I don't. I don't know if the Pelicans. I don't think the Pelicans. I think the Pelicans do make it. I. I really like some of the additions they made. Oh, I love them. That's the. That's the sad part. I just had to. <laughs> I just had to pick somebody to be the ninth seed. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, true. It's, I mean, the West tough. is going to be it's tough, tough to predict. Trying to, yeah, trying to figure out what to like get the chopping block. Like it's just. It's not fair, honestly. And someone like I'm going to be wrong. I just already know it. Hopefully, I get one of the two. <laughs> yeah, as long as you get one. I definitely think the Blazers are going to probably be one of those teams. But uh, actual prediction, I'm somewhere between 47 and 48 wins, you know, similar to you guys. I think anywhere between the 7 and 6 seed. We see some jumps, but there's still some issues defensively where they're not able to take that full next level. But um, any other final predictions on the season, guys? So I, I predict, I mean, they'll win a couple of games in the first round. I think the Timberwolves, their max potential – is to make the second round. I don't think even if things went perfect, they won't make the West Finals. Uh, but I think they could win a couple games in the second round. Uh, my actual prediction, I mean, is probably taking whoever to six games um, in the first round just to be safe. But um, I think Thibs is gone if they don't make the second round, or at least he should be. What about you guys? 
I, I agree. I, I think um, actually on the, the latest episode of Full Access Hoops I just recorded, we were talking about coaches that we think are on the hot seat. And obviously uh, Thibodeau came up on it. And I think this is one of those do or die years for him. I just think because of the locker room issues there's been, um, you know, the the fact that he's bringing in his own guys. Like, these are all clearly his guys he wants in here. If this team doesn't succeed, if these two young pieces and Wiggins and town team gets bounced in the first round um, maybe they make it to seven games in the first round he can you know kind of talk his way into it but like if they lose in like five or six games again in the first round there's not a chance he's back next year to me like not yeah. a chance yeah especially if the defense is bad I think that's the biggest concern I think you think of Tom Thibodeau and you're like you know this is a defensive you know guy you know, in Chicago, you just thought about those defenses and just really causing problems and making life miserable for offenses. And we just haven't saw that with Minnesota. So I think that and then also the fact, like you guys mentioned, if it's not competitive in the first round, because like they get matched up with someone really good and then they have injuries and then, you know, they lose in seven games, like Corey said, maybe he can convince them to stay. But most situations, I think they want to get to that second round. All right. I got to ask you guys something because we've been talking about it so much. So hypothetically speaking, if Wiggins and Towns were under my top three coaches, and I think they literally make everyone better. There's only three coaches that do it, and Bolster is an outsider four. Uh, but that's Snyder, Brad Stevens, or Pop. Uh, I personally think if Towns and Wiggins were under them, Wiggins would almost be an all-star right now, if not a borderline all-star um, under the, all those guys. Uh, but also I think Towns would be – arguably first team all NBA and a top for sure top 10 player in the NBA. Honestly, I think that's pretty fair. I mean, I think they haven't gotten the best out of these guys. We'll yet to see, and, you know, depending on if they change coaches and whatnot, but any thoughts on that from you, Corey? I mean, I think both those guys flourish under Popovich. It doesn't matter. Most guys do. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like he, he'll, he figures it all out every time. And Brad Steen doesn't really know. Um, I mean, man, the, between the ATOs and everything else, I, I don't know. He's – all three of these guys, honestly. Uh, I think Snyder would get more from Towns than I think he would from Wiggins, personally. Uh, I like, think Wiggins would do well under a guy like Stevens and Pop, though. Moving on, the most important question of the show, what emoji represents the Timberwolves for you? <laughs> uh, it came – it was very instantaneous. Uh, so I went with the shrug. <laughs> That's a, been a, a very one. popular one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> WTF emoji. What do you got, Corey? Uh, for me, I'm doing the uh, the emoji with the like the shh, the shush emoji, because um, we're just gonna, you know, we're not gonna tell Thibs that these guys are old. The players he wants to bring in, the Noah and Dang, and keeping the Chicago Bulls team alive and spirit. We're just gonna let him do his thing, and we're gonna. Try not to sleep on Towns and Wiggins after Wiggins having a, a rough, a somewhat rough year and Towns having a rough playoff series. I still think both those guys do have a lot of potential. So I'm going to go with the bomb emoji for two reasons. One, that I, <laughs> I think the locker room could explode in a negative way. You know, things just go bad with Jimmy Butler getting into it with Wiggins and Towns along some line. Then I think in the positive end of a bomb exploding, it would be, you know, Wiggins making that jump and hitting his potential and exploding and then Towns exploding on defensive end. I love it. I want to add the slap to the fore, the palm slap to the forehead emoji as well for, for Tom T. <laughs> I think you'll appreciate that. League pass wise, where does this team sit one through ten? Yeah, for me, obviously, I'm a lifelong fan, so it'd be a ten for me. But for the public and looking at this um, as a non-selfish thing, I'd probably say about an eight. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit lower. I'm I'm going with a seven. Oof. Um, <laughs> Corey's so got know, that a lot. He's gotten that a lot so far this yeah, year. Yeah, I think actually the seven's the highest one I've given out so far through like six. Okay, teams. I'll take that. So, so we're we're in the right direction. Yeah. So I think it's a seven. It's a seven for me because I think the starters are obviously going to be interesting to watch. I want to see Wiggins, Butler, Towns. Um, not really Teague. I'm kind of over that. Uh, but Tyus Jones and Derek Rose is still intriguing to see how those guys hold up later in their careers. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, I, I'm not thrilled with the bench still, and I'm not really thrilled with how these rotations may look. I just got a lot of question marks. So for me, it's, it's a seven, but um, it could be higher if this team comes out the gates, you know, red hot. 
It's an eight for me. You know, same thing as Zach uh, for the public. You know, just with Carl Anthony Towns, I think is a fun player to watch. We want to see the jumps he makes. And then obviously we mentioned Andrew Wiggins a ton on this show. And then Jimmy Butler too. And the attitude and yep. the, the chemistry and how those guys interact. I think that's always something to kind of keep an eye on as a fan. So an eight for me. I, I got an ad though. Corey, you're, I, I can't blame you at all because this is, if you're not a huge fan of like, Towns or Butler, it is extremely ugly basketball. <laughs> it, it, let's let's be real here. I mean, it is ugly basketball. I mean, it's not pretty out there. But they, they I mean, they got a couple exciting players, and there's so many question marks that it ma- it makes it fun. But I mean, that's what I kind of enjoy as being a fan, I guess. Yeah, there's talent and there's storylines, so you can't really ask for more than that. But the actual construct of the actual basketball game going on is not pretty. <laughs> so this is a hypothetical obviously you're a big t-wolves guy but if we had a gun to your head what tv show would you watch over the timberwolves Ooh, wow i mean yeah there's not not many i'll tell you that um for their team most people just pick their favorite show or like a season finale of their favorite show yeah. or Oh, uh, I'm watching Ozarks right now. That's pretty solid. I love Ozarks. I actually think we just had that brought up on another show, too. It seems to be a pretty popular choice. That's great. Uh, that, I'll just say the couple I'm watching right now, Ozarks, Animal Kingdom, and Power. Those are my three favorite right now. I've caught a little bit of Animal Kingdom and Power. I want to wait. I'm like a binge watcher, so I love when there's like a ton of seasons of things to so just start watching them and get through them all. But, Corey, what do you got? For me, it's Shameless. Um, yeah, I, I I got on this. Oh man, the shameless binge. I'm not even shame like it's shameless. <laughs> the binge was shameless. Let me tell you, it was Halloween la- a couple of years ago, and like we were we you know went out whatever. And the next morning, I came out and then shameless was on TV, and I was like, what was this? And then like all of a sudden on the hungover Sunday, I watched like ten episodes of Shameless, and it just continued until I finished the season of the show, I should say. Um, so it's gotta be shameless. I enjoy that, but. You know, it's it's still basketball at the end of the day. Yeah, like I said, it's a hypothetical for pretty much everybody, you know, unless we're talking about, like, the Kings. But um, the for me, it's going to be Daredevil, Netflix uh, original. You know, I like that show. I'm a big Marvel guy. So any last thoughts from you guys on the Timberwolves? You know, what are your – actually, I got a question for you, Zach. What would you say percentage-wise is the chances Jimmy Butler's traded this season? I'd probably go uh, 25-30. Um, I just, I, I think our front office is smart enough. Um, I just, the only reason why it's so high is because the West has gotten so much better and there are, there are question marks from the off season. Um, but I, I truly believe, I mean, 75, 80% of me, I mean, thinks this team is going to come together and get better. I mean, the talent is still there. I like the depth we added. I really do. I like our rookies. Um, it's just all depends on our two, two of our three top players. I mean, developing and who we originally thought they could be. So with that said, praying to God every night that Jimmy Bowler doesn't get traded because I love Jimmy Bowler. (laughs) (laughs) A good reason. What about you, Corey? Percentage wise, you think Butler's traded? Ah, man, I, I would have to say. I'd have to say less than twenty five percent, maybe even less than fifteen. I, I don't. I really don't see it happening. I, I just. I think they're going to want to do everything in their power to keep him long term. It's he's got to be out in the like in the locker room, basically saying like I'm done, like trade me. Right. I exactly. Think, like if he's if he's just like mildly unhappy, or or whatever the case, I think they're going to try and make it work. I I, just, I don't think they're going to move him unless it's become to the point where. You know, kind of like Paul George made it clear he was wasn't going to stay in Indiana. It's got to be the point where Jimmy Butler's saying like, "I'm not staying here. Like, no. just just give up." And like, that's that's the only way I see him being dealt. No, I'm I'm with you because he's Thibs' guy. I mean, they got a great relationship, so they they absolutely have to know he's going to be gone. And the chances of he's not going to want to get traded, regardless. I mean, who wants to get traded in the middle of the season, especially? If he still thinks they have any outside chance at the playoffs, um, nobody wants to get traded in the middle of the season. It's very rare, unless it is like him and Kyrie both getting traded somewhere, 
him getting traded to L.A. And, um, yeah, the Wolves would probably rather take their chances. I, yeah, I just don't see it happening. All right. Any other final thoughts from you guys on the T-Wolves? God, God bless Minnesota. <laughs> Derek Rose for sixth man of the year. Oh, oh God. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Zach, big thanks to you for hopping on. Tell the people where they can find you, find your work, you know, Twitter handle and whatnot. Yep, so basically uh, Twitter, it's Z-A-K-N-O-B-L-E. Uh, that's my main account or else Real Ball Insider. Uh, I occasionally throw up a piece up there, but mostly it's my podcast. Um, that'd be four and then S-Z-N-S, Four Seasons. Um, all about getting a lot of big time guests on there and I'm um, putting about one to two out a week and just grinding away at that. So appreciate any support. For sure, Zach. Uh, thank you for hopping on the pod, man. Actually, I listen to the Four Seasons podcast, one of my weekly shows. So awesome. what you guys do, bringing yeah. on the, the Bobby Porter's one was a really good listen. Um, it's a good show. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you saying that. Make sure you check out his podcast on iTunes and whatnot. As well, as always, Corey, a pleasure to talk hoops with you. You can catch our show on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, Google Play, and Dash Radio. Thank you, guys, and everybody have a great night. Until next time, peace out, knuckleheads.